Hi everyone, it's Mr. Borngarten with another microbit programming in Python video for us. Today I want us to learn about variables and working with numbers uh, in those variables. So what exactly is a variable? Uh, you might have heard the technical term bandied around in programming before. And it's nothing too fancy. A variable is just a named location in the computer's memory that we can use to store or retrieve a value. That's all it is. It's just a name that we assign a place in memory. It's kind of like if I said to you, can you please remember uh, my account balance of $500? And then I came back to you a week later and asked what my account balance is. Well, you've got this mental association of 500 and my account balance in your head. And so when I asked you for that, you knew to tell me 500. It's the same with uh, programming. So we can store information attach it to a name and by that association we can refer, refer back for, to it and do things with it. So to create a very simple variable, if I have a variable I, I just choose to call it number, I can scroll that number across the screen. I can use it wherever I would have otherwise used the number 100. I can use the variable called 100. So if I flash that onto my micro bit I will have the number 100 scroll across the screen. Nothing too extraordinarily exciting going on there. Right, there we go, 100. So it's not the word number that's going across the screen though, it's what is stored at this variable called number, which in this case is the number 100. Now it doesn't have to be called number, I could call it account balance, right? uh, like that earlier example. Uh, it has to be one word, you can't have spaces in a variable name. So in Python, people tend to use the little underscore where you would otherwise have a space to separate words. So I could put account balance here, uh, and if I flash that across the micro bit, uh, I will have the number 100 appear as well. And I can use this word now called account balance wherever I would otherwise have a number. So maybe I'm collecting, I'm saving all my pocket money. Uh, and so over a certain number of weeks, so let's say five weeks, and weekly allowance, maybe I earn $200 for every week. And so my account balance at the end of that can be whatever was inside weeks multiplied by my weekly allowance. Right, and so now if I flash that across the micro bit, I'll get five times 200. So the number 1000 will scroll across the screen. One, zero, zero, zero. Okay, and if I change the number of weeks, maybe I spent some money, so I've only got four weeks worth of savings. This time if I flash it, I'll get the number 800 scroll across the screen because Python is looking up uh, weeks, and you go 800 across the screen, and Python's looking it up and sees, oh, this has been set to the number four, it looks up weekly allowance and sees, oh, this has been set to the number 200, and then multiplies them together and saves it into account balance. Now, one crucial little thing for us to be aware of, when we are setting up these calculations in Python, we always name the variable we want it to be saved into first. Then we put the equal sign, and then we put the calculation on the right-hand side. So that we put the calculation on the right, and then the place it's going to get stored into goes on the left of the equal sign. You have to get that the correct way around. If, we, if I was to write weeks times weekly allowance equals account balance, that will not work. Okay, so that's uh, all well and good. What kind of stuff can I do with this mouse? All right, so we've got the star as is the multiplication symbol. Uh, we have the uh, addition and subtraction, as you would expect, and we use the slash, right, that looks like that. That's the divide symbol. But let's do something with that. So I'll just quickly erase this, and let's make a loop. All right, so let's create a variable called n and set it to zero. And using something that we did in the last lesson, while pin zero, pin zero hasn't been touched, so pin zero, while not, pin zero is touched. Get my head 
here, here, n is equal to n plus 1. And then display scroll n. So what is this doing? All right, so remember, the calculation goes on the right. So I'm trying to say, I want n plus 1. Well, what is n? n is this. n is 0. It starts off with that. So 0 plus 1 is 1. And then save it back into n. So n now becomes 1. So the first thing that's going to scroll across the screen will be the number 1. And then I'll come back into the loop. If I'm not touching the pin 0, right, it will then become what's inside n. Well, the last time I saved something to n, I saved the number 1. So now it's going to be n plus, so 1 plus 1 is 2 and then save that into n. So then the number two will go across the screen. And then it'll come back up. What's inside n? n has the number two. Two plus one is three, save that into n. So we get, scrolling across our screen, one, two, three, four, five, and so on. We've got a nice counting effect happening. And I'll just terminate that. If I can zero to touch. It's a little tricky sometimes to get this pin zero touching stuff to happen. There we go. Finally detected me. Okay, so I can, maybe I don't want to do the pin zero touch. Maybe I want to do, I want it to stop at a certain point all by itself. There's nothing stopping me from saying, well, n is less than 10. So if I was to do that, scrolling across the screen, it will now automatically stop. What I should have put down here was like a dif uh, display show image dot yes or something like that. Something for it to show once it's finished. Oops. Lighten up a bit. Just... There we go. So now we will get the numbers one, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then we'll get the yes symbol uh, because we've said here while n is less than ten. So we can also do things like, and I might just insert some little notes here for you. All right, so um, working on numbers, uh, we have the star is multiply. The slash is divide, the add is the addition symbol, and the subtraction symbol. Right. But then if we want to compare numbers, okay, like in a while loop or on an if statement, we've got the less than, we've got the greater than, less than or equal to is the two, those two symbols, greater than or equal to is those two symbols equals is not one equal sign, it's a double equal sign. Okay, so one equal sign is used for setting a value. The double equal sign is used for comparing two values. And then a not equals is an exclamation and an equal sign. Okay, so a little bit of notes there for you. Uh, so what else can we do with this? Well, let's add the buttons that we were doing last lesson. There's no reason I can't put in here if button A was pressed, whoops, if button A was pressed, um, maybe I want to skip forward 10 numbers. And I'm going to change this. Instead of stopping at 10, I'm going to stop at 100. Uh, and so if button A was pressed, skip forward 10. Uh, if button B was pressed, uh, double what's in n. How about we do that? So whatever's in n, let's times it by 2. And so now, if I flash that onto my micro bit, I can press A to skip forward 10 numbers. I can press B and I'll double whatever is inside my number. So I get 1, 2, 3, let's press A, 14, 15, let's press B, 16, there we go, 34, that's because it was 16 and then it added the one, so it became 17 and then it doubled and became the 34, all right, because we've got the, the one there. It's scrolling, and that was when I pressed the button, 
then it added the one and then it said was B pressed and then doubled it. All right, so the order of your lines of code matter. Uh, maybe I want to add something else to this. And so for this, I'm going to teach you one last little thing. Uh, you've got these in your notes, hopefully. So I'll delete that. And I need to import something new. So I'm going to import random up here in line two. Please make sure you add that, because otherwise this next part will not work. And I'm going to say, if pin one oh, is touched, right? so because I can use these pins just like buttons, maybe I want to jump to a random location anywhere between zero and 100. So to do this, I can just say n is equal to random dot rand int, short for random integer. And then remember, an integer is just a whole number. And if I open up my brackets, we'll get the little helpful prompt. A and B, return a random whole number between A and B. So between 0 and 99. All right, calculate a random number between 0 and 99 and put it inside N. So if I flash that to my micro bit, hopefully it's going to be more effective at detecting my pin presses, my pin touches. All right, two, three, and if I touch ground and pin one at the same time, trust me, it works. <laughs> Oh, 78, it's t it detected it at some point there. <laughs> 80, 81, come on. 64, 96. You get the idea. This is Mr. Baumgarten signing out.